and welcome to Delicious Simplicity. I'm Anna Torkakis. On the menu today, we have carved spaghetti with yogurt and scallions. We have a slow pan roasted salmon. And we have for dessert an assorted uh, arrangement of fruit with uh, a mango coulis. And so it's all delicious. So let's get started. So here I have my pan that I'm going to use to roast. And I've already... Um, brushed it with oil, a, a little bit of olive oil. I've also brushed the top of the salmon with a little bit of olive oil here. And I'm also now going to sprinkle it with a little bit of salt, just a touch. Put that back on here. Put this upside down at first so that it gets nice and brown, like so. And what I'm going to do to it as well is add on uh, these herbs that I have. And they're wrapped in a paper towel because these are one, what I do when I have fresh herbs is, and I sort of don't, going to be using them right away. Um, I wash them, pat them dry really well, and then put them on one layer in the refrigerator and let them dry for a few days until they look they're about dry. And then I wrap them in paper towel and leave them in the refrigerator and use them as I need them. So here I have thyme. Um, and some other herbs here. So um, today I'm just going to use the thyme and just a, just a few sprigs here that I'm going to put on top. And because this is slowly cooking, I'm going to put a lid on it. And since, since these kind of pans don't come with a lid, I'm going to improvise with what I have available here. There we go. That should work. So I'm going to put this on low. It's a little bit higher now because I had it heating a little bit. So the next thing I'm going to work on is the uh, mango coulis. So this mango coulis is really, oh, it's such a delicious, refreshing flavor on your fruit. I want to show you, I've made some already, and I want to show you what it looks like if you keep it cold. So I made this the other day, and as you can see, it's really thick. And it sort of coats your fruit, like it gels on it. So and it's, it's really, an, uh, and it just matches really nice with the fruits that we'll be using today. So what I'm going to need is uh, some pineapple, some limes, and of course the mango. And then to this, I'm going to add, these are the fruits. Uh, in addition, I'm also going to be tossing in some strawberries and some blueberries to give it some nice color. So those are all going to be going in. So in addition to that, I'm going to be adding some rum to just to pick it up a little bit and some sugar. So let's see. I think what I'll do is the mango first. Uh, so this, these sometimes are tricky to cut. So I've already... It's always a good idea with, uh, with fruits and vegetables, even if you're not going to eat the skins, to rinse them just to get rid of whatever might be on it. So I've already rinsed this. I'm going to cut it. There we go. So it's, I guess it's about an inch wide, and we'll come back to that. And then to cut this, what works really neat is you just kind of cut through across, not through the skin, Make little um, dices, kind of. So now I need my blender. You could do this in a food processor too. I, I just, if you have a small one, uh, that would work. This, I don't think there's enough material for you know one of the bigger kinds. And so then what you do is you take your knife and you just run around it, around the peel. And they just kind of pop out. It's really kind of fun. Sometimes they pop right out, and sometimes you kind of have to pry, pry them out a little bit. I'm going to cut around this one first and see how if this works any better. There we go. This is cutting it similar to a um, avocado, same idea. Oh, there we, there we go. This looks actually better. Okay. 
All right, so next what I'm going to do is put in two tablespoons of um, rum. It's amazing, many times just a couple of really interesting ingredients together and you get this incredible flavor. Of course, a little rum never hurt anything. And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of lime juice. I like fresh lime juice. I'm going to cut these up. Oh, and also before I forget, I need a teaspoon of uh, lime zest. And once you cut a, uh, either a lime or a lemon, you c you, it's really hard to zest, so I want to make sure I do it with the ones that I have remaining here. So here I'm going to zest this lime. Oh, wow. I think I have more than a teaspoon here. There we go. We'll use a general teas a generous teaspoon. Let's put the rest in here for later. All right, so I'm just gonna put that in there now. And then continue on squeezing. These are beautiful limes, nice and large. That's what we got these at Calories Those Farm Stand and Garden Center. They have beautiful plants this, this time of the year. And the fruits too, the pineapple smells delicious. There we go, I think this looks about two tablespoons, we'll see. So we measure two tablespoons in here, oh yeah. Yeah, like I said, about one and a half. There we go. Good. Almost there. So now we need two tablespoons of sugar. And here's two. I believe I have everything in there now. So I'm just going to blend it. Oh, wow. I think this looks great. Let's see. Oh, look at that. And I love, I don't know if you can see it. Sometimes you get these, uh, some chunks just don't like to be blended, but that's okay. Um, but I love seeing the specks of the uh, lime set. All right, so we'll save this for a little bit while I cut up the rest of the fruit. Put this in the refrigerator just to cool it off a little bit. So here I'm going to start getting my bowl ready, and I'm going to add some um, to the strawberries here first. And I'm going to cut them in quarters. Probably use about mm, about a cup. And you can arrange these any way you'd like. So we'll see how this looks. And then if it looks like it might need a few more strawberries or blueberries, we'll, we'll just add them. Again, these have been washed as well. All right, now for the pineapple. One thing to know is when you're buying a pineapple and you wonder, is it ripe yet? How do I know when it's ripe? What I've been told, a little trick, is that if you take one of these leaves and you pull it, um, and it should come out, it should come out fairly, you know, with very little effort, like so. So this is, this is pretty good. They come out fairly easily. So that's the trick, and if that happens, then you've got then you know that they're pretty well uh, ripe. This one I can smell, and it really looks really beautiful. So I'm going to take this off. 
Um, now, typically you see, and I think sometimes they, there's a little tag on the pineapple that, that sort of tells you how to cut it, and they have you cutting it, uh, you know, lengthwise and then quartering it. And that's certainly fine to do. What I like to do, though, is cut it crosswise. So I'm going to start with half and see how far this goes in as far as how that looks. So I like to cut it in half because then I find it for me, it's easier to come around and cut the, cut the, the skin off. And pineapples are great to have on hand because they last for some time once you cut them. So when I get a pineapple, I cut it up in chunks and keep it and serve it in the refrigerator again so that whenever you need it. So I'm going to quarter this like so. Then you just cut, cut around that hard core in the center. There, so that's done. All right, so I'm going to tackle my salmon. Let's see. Oh, it smells nice. There we go. It's nice to cook a big piece of fish like this. It is, although it's a little hard to maneuver sometimes in the pan. There we go. Let's see if this works. There we go. Great. So, back to the pineapple. I'm just going to cut this in chunks. You could cut it in spears if you wanted to, and then you know thread it to a skewer and uh, serve it with the sauce of, of the coolie. But I'm going to cut it in uh, in squares, in chunks, and just sort of pour them on top. So I said you could cut them into spears like that, and then thread them through a um, a skewer and put the coolie over it. And it's so thick that it actually um, sits on it. So it coats it and stays on coated. All right, so we're done with that. And I'm just going to give this a quick toss just so that I bring some of the strawberries out and the blueberries so that there's a really nice mixture and colorful. How's that? And maybe a couple more blueberries. Uh, yeah, I think that's about right. And then just one more strawberries, only because we've added. You know, want to be you want to be fair. If you've added more blueberries, you want to add more strawberries. little here and there. All right. There. Done. How's that look? So now I'm going to add the sauce. The cool, I keep calling it sauce. I keep wanting to call it a sauce, but it's really a coolie. It's a, you can, and you can also do this. It's essentially a puree. And you could also do this with any uh, vegetable. And it's usually used to, you could, so you could decorate the plate all around if you wanted to, but I'm just going to sort of pour it on top. Okay. So I'm going to put this here, put the remainder on the side. And actually, I'm also going to plate one here for us. add some extra sauce over it, extra coolie, sorry. There we go. Doesn't that look pretty? Look at that, beautiful. All right, so back here, 
Now we're going to start working on the pasta. So while the water boils, I'm going to work on putting my, um, the ingredients that I need here together. So what I need are two bunches of scallions, which I have here washed, so I'm just going to chop these. Okay, I'm going to take the bottoms off. So on the scallions, I'm going to need all the white part and then a little bit of the green, so not all the green. I'm going to do that much, save these for later, and chop these up. That's too many. There we go. If you didn't have green, uh, uh, green onions or scallions, you could use um, shallots. I think those would work nicely in here, too. Onions may not quite work. I think they would be too strong. But I think shallots, like a shallot, would be good. Chopped really finely. OK, so these are done. I want to check on my water. Oh, that's boiling. So I'm using, so the water's boiling, um, and I'm waiting to get these, to get the spaghetti in the water because the, the rest of the recipe comes so quickly together, hardly any cooking in the pan. But, so I don't want to be waiting for it. Okay, so this is boiling, so I'm going to use half, half a pound of um, pasta. Interestingly enough, these packages are not a pound. Oftentimes we think they are, but they're not. So you want to make sure that you read the, the weight on them. So this is about uh, three quarters of a pound. So I'm just going to use almost a little more than half. There we go. I think that's about it. That's about half, a little more than half. Add about a tablespoon or so, a little less here of salt. This is nice, nice rolling boil. This is one of those induction oven uh, tops. Okay, so that takes a few minutes, about six minutes. That's on the. Oh, one thing I, I want to point out about this is that so this takes about eight minutes to cook. And I also want to point out that this has five grams of fiber per serving. And a serving is um, two ounces. And that two ounces translates into two servings of a grain. So, for example, if you were um, uh, substituting it for bread, that would be two pieces of grain, uh, two pieces of bread. Okay, so that's going. So I'm going to turn my skillet on, and I'm going to add a tablespoon of oil in here, olive oil. It's about a tablespoon. I'm looking for here one clove of garlic that I'm going to cook in the oil. And then uh, when it's done cooking, I will remove the garlic and toss it away. So it's only in here to flavor the oil. There we go. That's there. Now I'm going to add the uh, scallions. that for a little bit. I'm going to add just a pinch of salt, not quite a teaspoon. Ah, the, the aroma in here between the salmon and the scallions cooking, phenomenal. This is what makes home cooking fun when you cook at home. Simple recipes like these that you can whip up together in less than half an hour. And they smell delicious. Okay, to that, now I'm going to add the 
major ingredient for this flavoring uh, of this dish, and that is curry. I'm going to add one teaspoon of curry in here. And I'm also going to add three tablespoons of um, vegetable broth. They don't have to be exact, so I'm just going to use a regular spoon. And curry is very good for you. Uh, it acts as an antioxidant, and so it's really uh, beneficial. Something else I want to uh, point out about curry, I'm going to remove this because I think I've cooked it long enough and I'm going to wait for the, um, for the um, pasta to be ready, actually, so I can actually turn this off, put it over here. Um, one of the things, curry is sort of a, a mixture of different, um, different spices, so you always want to read the, the ingredients as to what's in that particular brand that you're, you're getting. In the meantime, to here, I'm going to add my yogurt. Uh, so, and that's what gives it that rich Alfredo sauce-like te uh, texture. So I'm using 2% um, Greek yogurt here. You could use full fat if you'd like, low fat. Um, I may not use 0% fat because you do want a little bit of fat sort of to give it a little more texture, more mouthfeel. So I'm going to add that to here. You want about a cup. So mix that in here. Let me mix it and I'll show you. But here we go. So we got that. I'm, I'm trying to scrape all the little, some of the, um, some of the curvy has stuck to the bottom, so I'm trying to make sure I get it. There we go. So to this, I'm going to, all, I'm going to add a little bit of the pasta water, but um, so I could add some now, but instead what I'm going to do is, um, you know, um, drain it right from the pan and put it in here so that there's that little bit of liquid, and that will help to thin out the, uh, the sauce. Um, so let me see how that's doing. best way to know is to taste this. I'm going to taste it. Actually, it's just the perfect time to allow me enough time to take the salmon out, and then that will be ready. So I've had the salmon on low all this time that the meal has been be, has been prepared. I'll turn that off. It's a little hot. There we go. Isn't that pretty? So I'm going to put that on the dish to serve. So what you do is you put the skinless side down first so that when you turn it over, the skin then is the second half that, the skin part is the second half that cooks. And that way when you transfer it to your plate, it's easier that way. You can just chop, this, the top will be showing, which is the prettier side, which is what you want. As I said, these big pieces, they look pretty, but sometimes they're a little challenging to work with. I think, there we go. I'm going to remove the dry herbs. Of course, there's some of the other ones on the bottom, but we don't care about those at the moment. Move this out of the way. And I'm just going to put a little bit of parsley here on the side, just as a garnish. So you can cut the pieces at the table. This is nice and moist. All right, so now the pasta's ready. How's that for turning? Sometimes it's a real challenge uh, trying to get all the dishes and, and ingredients to come together at once, but I think we've done it today. So I'm going to move this over here. So 
So here I have some uh, quarter cup of Parmesan cheese already grated. I want to get this ready. Now I didn't add any vegetables to this, but if you wanted to, you could uh, do some peas or even some of those little tiny baby uh, baby spinach leaves. You could toss those in here too. I would probably just toss them in at the last minute with the pasta and then toss it all together. There we go. And then you just toss this. Might need a little. I, think I might need a tablespoon to get some of this water here. There we go. All right, then we get a serving platter. This looks really pretty on a platter because it just uh, sort of shows off the color. Just spoon some of the sauce on top. Now I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of the cheese here. Give that a light toss. Isn't that pretty? So there's the green from the scallions and the Parmesan cheese that's going to be coating all the strands. A little extra here on this side. And then, just to keep it all looking fresh, going to chop up some parsley. And just sprinkle that just to give it that sort of real fresh taste, uh, taste a uh, fresh look. All right, so here we have it. So here we have, again today, another quick, simple meal that just tastes fabulous. We have started with the, with the salmon that's slow cooked, uh, so sort of just sat there and did its thing, and then it was ready when we were ready. Uh, we made this beautiful fruit, assorted, this assortment of fruit with pineapple and, and uh, strawberries and blueberries all in season this time of the year, and drizzled it with this wonderful, refreshing mango coulis which has this real fresh taste. Um, we, did use a, we did use a little bit of rum in it just to kick it up a notch a little bit, awesome. And for our main um, sort of uh, side dish here, we have the uh, spaghetti with curry and yogurt that tastes just like an Alfredo sauce, but it's so much more waist friendly, it's awesome. So these are some of the things I wanted to share with you today. And I want to thank Calarisa's Farm Stand and Garden Center for supplying a lot of the products here today for us. And I want to thank you for watching. And I'm Anna Torcatis, and have fun cooking. Take care. Bye-bye.